Hello everyone and welcome to the Chamber of Commerce Southern New Jersey's webinar on using LinkedIn as a social media tool and using your digital Rolodex. My name is Meredith Laura Lear and I am Executive Vice President of the Chamber. Thank you to the nearly 200 participants that have joined us online today to hear from our dear friend Ryan Harbinson, Director of Business Development for Clearbridge Branding Agency. Ryan also serves as a natural part of the Chamber team as Chairman of the Chamber's Ambassador Committee and plays an important role in helping our staff attract and retain members, as well as helping those members feel welcomed at our chamber events and educating them on how to maximize their memberships. Before I turn the program over to Ryan, please allow me to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your audience console, you will see a chat feature. If you have questions during the presentation, please submit your questions in the chat. We will be answering them throughout the program, so don't wait until the end to submit them. We will have an on-demand version of this presentation and it will be sent to attendees later today along with a survey and posted on our Chamber website. With that, please allow me to in introduce and welcome Ryan Harbinson. Ryan? Thanks so much, appreciate it. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, this is a great opportunity um, and I really appreciate the Chamber giving me this, uh, this platform to speak. So uh, we will just jump right in. So give me one second, let me share my screen here, all right. Okay. All right. So thanks again. Uh, and, um, you know, as we go through, um, if you do have questions, we are going to take questions kind of live. It makes, uh, it makes it a little bit more interactive. So if you do have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, and uh, we're going to cover a couple things today. Um, so uh, we're going to go over a lot of techniques and a lot of strategy today. And uh, we will be sending out kind of a cheat sheet that goes through everything I'm going to talk about today so that you kind of uh, don't miss anything. Um, and uh, really gonna go over some basics in the beginning, uh, and then we're gonna kind of dive heavy into um, some strategy stuff. So let's get this party started, right? Okay, so just a little bit about myself and the company. So again, my name is Ryan Harbinson. I am the Director of Business Development for ClearBridge Branding Agency. Uh, we are a group of industry vets that have really come together to start something special. So, um, you know, the average experience for our team is about 22 years. And our VP of digital is an expert writer for Forbes. Um, our creative director has been involved with, in rebrandings for uh, Patco, uh, Goldman Sachs, Cooper, and, and many, many others. And our VP of operations has worked with Fortune 5 or Fortune 100 companies. So we bring kind of a different uh, feel to this area. And we really look at uh, brand as, you know, from a different perspective. And really it starts with branding and your, um, you know, the creative side of it, which is really where we shine. Then we kind of work to uh, really figure out who your target audience is and what your message is. And then really our 30 point checklist, uh, which is social, digital, web, SEO, TV, radio, video, media, print, whatever really makes you know, sense for your brand and who and what you're trying to say. You know, and, and here at ClearBridge, you know, we focus on building your brand. Uh, and today we're really gonna talk about how you are the brand for your company, right? So even though you work for someone else, you, know, you are still your own personal brand out there every day, educating people about what you do. And today we're going to really go over how you can utilize LinkedIn to really do that, right? So let's get right into it. All right. So one of the first things that you should really check out is uh, LinkedIn provides uh, the SSI, which is your social selling index, right? So LinkedIn actually rates your profile based on how it's performing. So if you check it out in the corner right here, linkedin.com slash sales slash SSI, that'll give you a breakdown on what your profile looks like. So for me, I'm in the top 1% of anyone that is under the tag of marketing and advertising of all of LinkedIn. Uh, and then in uh, my network, which are people that I'm directly connected with, I'm in the top 2%, right? So the way that LinkedIn gets this score is based on a four different um, sections based on a score of 25 points. So if we look here, we have establish your personal brand, 
find the right people, engage with insight, build relationships, right? So out of those four categories, I'm scaled on a 25 points. And if you look up here, the average for my industry is 27%, okay? The average in my network is 42, and my score is a 75. Now, what's great is that LinkedIn actually provides these little, uh, little snippets of how to really get that score up. So if you click on those four categories, the orange, the purple, the red, and the green, it'll give you a five to seven like PDF that kind of just gives you some insight on strategy, give you some uh, understanding on how LinkedIn is uh, rating you on those sections so that you can kind of get your score up, all right? So let's get into some basics, right? Everyone loves the basics. All right, so your first impression, right? We all know that, you know, and I say this all the time that your, your, your picture is very important, right? So like you don't, you're on a professional site, so you don't want it to be based around the other sites. So you don't want to be like the duck face guy here who's obviously at the club hanging out. You know, you don't want to be like the girl here with the sunglasses and the guy's arm over her shoulder. Now, you know, I don't know the duck face guy, but I did get permission from this photo because uh, that is my wife and that is my arm. So we're okay on that one, right? <laughs> you know, what's great now is the, uh, the um, headshots can be a little pricey or maybe it's not in your budget, but the, the cameras that we have on our phones, you can really take a nice headshot. So, you know, I always say, if I can't see the white of your eyes, the picture is too far back, um, or at least have it be extra professional in this way here, right? So an easy headshot. So, you know, you have to realize that each one of the platforms of social media is a different element, right? It's a different audience. It's a different message, right? Much like the television networks, right? So we've got CBS, ABC, Fox, NBC, right? So CBS is a little bit of uh, murder TV with a splash of comedy. ABC is more family. Uh, you know, Fox is kind of the wild child and NBC is a little bit of both, right? So... You know, remember that with your profile picture. So you can tell a different story on what each one of the platforms. So here's the same guy, right? This is his Facebook picture. This is his LinkedIn picture, right? Different audience, different message, different people. So let's keep going. All right, so if you don't learn anything from this presentation today, the one thing I can't emphasize enough is the importance of a detailed profile, all right? You know, the average time that we at ClearBridge get on a website for our clients that's good is between like 10 and 20 seconds is good timing because people come on, they find what they want, they get what they need, and they leave, right? So you want to think of that same kind of mentality for your profile, right? So what's great is that, you know, your resume, when you're putting it out there, it can only really be a page because no one wants to, to go any further than that. So think about this. It's just, this is just your resume with every possible opportunity that you could post on here at a time. So we're going to go through a couple sections here and we're going to, we're going to jump back and forth live a little bit to LinkedIn to kind of go over some stuff uh, and really go into some more detail. So remember your headline is not your current position. It's not what you're doing at the time. You know, if people want to find out what your position is and what you're, you're doing right now as a job, they'll scroll down and check it out in your experience section, right? Your headline is, is telling people either what you do, what your experience is, maybe the type of client that you're looking for. So prime example, um, I did the, one of these uh, sessions a couple of weeks ago um, for a, a group of realtors and the one woman had on her profile, you know, a uh, realtor at KW. And after we got to kind of talking about what they were doing and what their message was, she changed hers to helping first time home buyers find a home. And, and once she did that, she actually got more traffic and more eyes on her profile page with opportunities because people knew exactly what it was she was trying to do, right? So remember, again, we live in a headline generation of readers, right? People don't really read that much. And they are in and out quickly. So we want to utilize that mentality on our descriptions of every page. So your about section, four to five sentences at max, okay? Your experience, you know, I tend to stick to mine at like two to three sentences uh, on what my company does 
And then if I want to add more detail to my actual sections of my experience, I'm going to put bullet points, right? So I'm going to do 10 words or less with bullet points. You know, volunteer stuff is really important too. So your boards, the committees, you know, the community programs. So are you the head coach of a team? Are you part of uh, the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts? You know, uh, are you, uh, you know, part of the church bake sale? Uh, whatever it is. This is just showing people that you're doing things and it's going to open up opportunities to start conversations with people, which we're going to go over later, right? Education is important. And then there's a whole area that you can add to more. So we're going to jump over real fast. So here we go. All right. So bear with me. We're all having slow internet, right? Crazy storms. Okay. So let's start at the top. We're going to work our way down. So one of the most important things before we start is this section right here, right? Your headline banner, right? So your banner should not be blue with the dots, right? That's the generic, uh, that's the generic for uh, an area that LinkedIn puts down there so that you have nothing there. So it's just where it is. You know, this section of the banner just shows people that you're more active on LinkedIn, that you're actually doing things. So I tell people a couple things for this area, right? So you can have, you know, a, a banner that kind of tells who you are and what you do, or this can just be a little insight into your personality, right? So if you're a big Phillies fan, if you love the city, if you love the cook, if you're a beer person, you know, whatever it is, this is a nice section to kind of give people a little insight on what your, you know, uh, personality looks like. For me, I keep it, you know, who we are, what we do, and where we go from there. All right, scrolling down, right? So, uh, you know, your, your headline here. So, you know, my headline is usually shaking hands and building brands. I can't shake hands, unfortunately, at this point. But, you know, right now, and this is really what I've been doing is, you know, we're continuing to build brands, but also keeping people connected, right? Uh, scrolling down, um, this is a section here, the, the services provided. Um, this is newer, so sometimes it shows up and sometimes it doesn't. LinkedIn's kind of, it's a little buggy right now. Uh, but if this does show up, this is great to th throw in details of what um, services that you offer, right? So if anything, okay, I work for ClearBridge, okay, I build brands, this is what I provide, and I'm out. So they don't even make it past there, at least they know what it is that I'm offering and what I'm doing. So you can add up to 10 sections in this area, so I definitely recommend doing this as well. All right. Um, and then also, this pencil, right, if we see these pencils, this is how you edit your sections all the way down as we scroll down, all right? So moving on, my about, right? So my about is short and sweet, right? We've got about four sentences, and then I always like to just put these little extra insights on who I am and what I like, right? My featured sections, so these are some, uh, some works from the agencies, my YouTube channel, which I just posted, so if you haven't seen some of our YouTube videos, uh, they're on there as well. Um, some stuff we did for Rowan, Wolf Commercial. So this is a great area to show people kind of what work that you've done and who you are. And then moving down, right? So what activity, we'll talk about activity later. My experience, right? Literally, it's one sentence and then some area of what we do. All right, when I was with Belia, same thing. Quick little sentence of what we do and then, and then the, 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 uh, the services that we offer, all right? You know, I, I used to do a bunch of stuff. So a quick sentence and then, you know, you can add things to it. So like, here's our website. And then here's like a little like YouTube video that somebody put up that I put in of, of GeekFest. You know, uh, here's the, uh, the old uh, uh, store I used to run for board games. So I put all the, you know, a quick little snippet of what we do. And then like all the awards that we won for the community and stuff, you know, keep going down. I used to make games. So here's all the stuff that we did for games. Here's my bullet points and here's some trailers. All right, so the more info that you can put in those sections, the better it's going to be. All right, scrolling down, my education, all my volunteer experience, and then, you know, my accomplishments. So here's some publications that we had uh, when I was working at the store and we were doing video game stuff. You know, I won a, a leadership uh, for ambassadors for the, the chamber as well. So that's in there as well. So the more you can do, the better. So just take some time do your homework and get this section filled. So if you click right here where it says add profile section, we're going to click on that and it literally breaks your profile down into sub subsections. So as you click down, it's just going to tell you where you can add stuff. So the more you can add, the better it is because we want people to check out what you do, keep them on the page as long as we can, because if people are coming to your profile, that means we're getting eyes on you. Okay, and the whole gist of this presentation today is understanding that you are the brand, 
You know, we are trying to turn things from ice cold to lukewarm. And how do we going to be able to use the Rolodex of people that we know to its full ability? All right, moving on. Come on, baby. Okay, what to post, right? Everybody's favorite thing. I don't know what to post. I don't know how to do it. Here's the problem, is that everybody that isn't posting is missing out on opportunities and you're, and you're overthinking what to post, right? So remember, posting something is better than posting nothing, all right? And content is king and engagement is queen, all right? So today, we're just, uh, first we're gonna talk about content and then we're gonna talk about engagement later on. All right, so just a couple of things, right? So we're all doing tons of Zoom calls, right? If you're on a Mac, you can press Command Shift 3 to take a screenshot. If you're on the PC, you can do Apple Print Shot to take a screenshot. Take pictures of those Zoom calls, right? The more that you can bundle together as a big group, say, great week of networking, and five different groups that you're part of, that's great content because we're gonna talk about why it's important to tag those people as well, all right? Ryan, real quick before you move on, we have a couple questions if you want to answer them before. Go ahead. Why? So, for LinkedIn, we have two of our attendees asking about that banner that you mentioned, and if you could show them again how to change it. Yeah, great. Okay, so you know I'm a graphic designer by trade, so I do a lot of all my own graphic design work. So this is something that I created. So if you go to the banner, you're going to click right here in this section. All right. Now, when you open up that, it's basically going to go, we're going to go back here. So this, this pencil here is representative of this. See, the, see how they kind of set these up in boxes? See this box area right here? There's a box right here. You've got a box right here. So anything that's in that box is going to be representative of that pencil and the ability to edit it. So we would go to edit right here. And then basically we go right up to here. Now, if you look here and you, and you hover over the pencil, this is going to give you the pixel requirements for that banner. Okay, so this is 1584 by 396 pixels required. Okay, now if you are not a graphic designer and you're not the greatest artist, you can Google this kind of stuff and it'll just open it up for you. Just what I say is make sure that when you're when you're doing that and you're saving stuff, make sure you don't have watermarks and stuff because there's that there's there's images out there you have to pay for like one two three graphics and Shutterstock and all that. But like here we'll just we'll just do it. see this is why I love it. we get to do all these live things right here. So we'll just go we'll open up a new tab. All right, let's say your CPA. We have CPA, LinkedIn, banner. Bang, all right? We go right to images, and here you go. There's a bunch of these, okay? Just make sure you know where they're coming from and all that. So you can just click on this one, all right? So we're at uh, 1400 by 425. That's right on the money. Right click, save, go back in. And we'll edit that up. And then all of a sudden you've got something up there. That's, that's, and it doesn't have to be CPA. Like I said, this is a great area if you want to put your personality out there too, as well. Okay. Okay. We have one more question. Um, we have somebody who has a LinkedIn profile for himself personally, and then also for his business. And he's wondering how he can separate the two in terms of how potential clients see him. Okay. Um, so your, your business is a person. Yeah, I think it's a, a sole proprietor. So he has his own profile for his, him per, as a person, but then another one for his company. So you're, you have a company page and then you have your mm -hmm. own personal page. Correct. Okay, great. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail, but I can okay. mention that right now. Um, so here's, here's the difference between um, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn, right? So if you are your own company page on Facebook, you can act like a person and post and talk. LinkedIn, you really can't do that. So part of what it is, is we're going to talk about this in a little more detail, but, you know, posting content on your company page and then, um, and, and then utilizing the opportunity to share that content out from the company page will bring people to the company page to see what's going on. Um, the company page is great to have because a couple things. One, I can just show that real fast too. One, when you create a company page, when you have these sections of your profile under experience, right? See how I have these gray boxes? It's because I don't have a LinkedIn page for that business, okay? So what you're really hoping to do is that when people come in, they say, all right, we build brands with a clear focus strategy. All right, let's check these guys out. And then bang, they click on the ClearBridge. Right now, this takes you right to ClearBridge's page. 
And then we've got a bunch of content on here too that continues to go. So the, what's great about the company pages is that you can utilize the company pages of more detailed work on what you're doing, who you are, and bringing people and keeping them, really you're keeping them on, on your page even though they're going to the company page as well. So I hope that answers your question. And we're gonna go over some strategy for that later on as well too. All right, here we go. Um, oh, so we're still on here, we didn't even finish this. So, so again, so networking groups are great. So utilize the, uh, uh, the abilities to take screenshots on there, right? So as we do more events, you know, I always say that, you know, the culture element of who you are and what your company does is gonna get way, way more likes, comments, and shares than you posting something that's like, good afternoon, LinkedIn audience. Our rates have never been lower, and today you can refine it. People don't care about that. They don't want to be sold to. They want to get to know who you are, right? So, you know, interesting articles are great. You know, current trends. So, like, and this is a big thing that I push all the time. If you're having a problem with, with what to post and you, you just, you're not, you don't want to be in front of the camera, you know, this is a great time to utilize other people's content as your own, okay? You know, companies like Forbes, and, you know, influencers on LinkedIn, you know, uh, Tony Robbins and Oprah and all those people, they spend tons of money hiring people to create content for them. So if you are stuck on what to do and there's some really great people that are high up in your industry that have been, that are, the names are well done and they're, they're, they're known as a pioneer in the industry, utilize their content and save that content. Put it out there as your own because you're going to get eyeballs and you're going to get engagement through other people's content. You know, the other thing too is video, the importance of video. Video is unbelievable right now and it's continuing to grow. You know, so if you have an opportunity and you don't know what to post, just take a video, 30 seconds. Tell people what you're doing. Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're doing great out there. You know, what a crazy week. I don't know about you, but I'm all zoomed out. Let me know how many Zoom calls you've done this week. All right, let's catch up. Bang, done. Post it, put it out. It's that simple. Overthinking content means that you're not creating content. And if you're not creating content, you're not being seen. And if you're not being seen, then no one's coming to your profile. And that's the name of the game. So let's keep going. All right, how to post, okay? So posting techniques. For me, I live my life by uh, five easy things. Face, place, peoples, hashtags, headlines, all right? So if you see here, I'm gonna take a picture. You know, I don't ever take pictures with my, by my, of myself, because I know what I look like, okay? I mean, tell some people on Instagram, I guess they forget what they look like, which is why they're always taking pictures of themselves. Um, I always take pictures with other people, right? So, and I always like to write a headline that makes sense. So, you know, officially known as the bad kids table, which, you know, um, the four of us aren't really allowed to sit next to each other anymore. You can ask Meredith, she knows all about it. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll then utilize my hashtags, right? So, you know, my personal hashtag, my, my uh, company, you know, some different hashtags that are, you know, affiliated with my industry. And then I'm gonna tag everybody in that picture and I'm also gonna tag the organization, right? So when I do that, everybody's gonna get a notification that I tag them, all right? And when they do that, What's that? What I'm hoping for them is to do one of four things. Like, comment, share, or all the above. All right? Tag everyone. All right? So the more that you're posting, right, the more you're going to get people to come to your profile. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we're trying to drive traffic to our profile so that people can check us out. And we want to keep them on our profile page for more than 20 seconds, which is why we're going to put as much detail on that page as possible, right? So just a couple of different techniques that I use. So, you know, I tend to go, when I go to a big chamber event, if I do something that's got a, the speaker from American Water and there's 200 people in the room and I'm going to see a bunch of people, I'm going to take notes of everybody that I know. Like, I'm going to literally open up an email and just start jotting down notes so I don't forget who's there. You know, uh, the chamber does a great job of sending out the list of people that are going to be there. I'm going to utilize that list, right? Sometimes I'm just going to take a picture of the room because there's so many people. You know, uh, I'm always taking a picture with the speakers or the CEOs that are in those, uh, that, that are speaking at those, converse, uh, at those uh, conferences. And then if I don't, I'm always going to take, or I'm going to take pictures with my power, power network. 
dollars, right? Because their reach is bigger than mine. So if we look down on the bottom here, uh, I was I was on a committee for a gala, and there's 16 people in this picture right here, right, all the way around. I took a picture of of the table. Now, notice how I strategically sat down at the end of here. I don't want to sit in the middle here because I don't want to be like in the middle of the meeting and take a panorama of everybody. I'm purposely sitting back here because I know at some point I'm going to take a picture of the table, right? I'm going to tag all these people in this picture and all these people that I've tagged are all going to get a notification. So all those people that are getting notifications, I'm winding up in their feeds, all right? So let's see what that looks like. Whoever had that question, great question, right? Let's jump in. All right, here we go. So, boom, I post, all right? When I post, I'm tagging all those people in my post. Well, let's just say that I just post, I post and I only tagged three people. And out of those three people, they all liked it, commented, shared it, or did all of the above, all right? So, when I hit that post, they're like, hey, what's up? You got a notification. So now all these people have notifications. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get in as many lanes of, of highway as possible, all right? And by lanes, I mean feeds. So I'm trying to get as many feeds as possible. So every time that this person likes my post, it now appears in their feed. So if I tag Brian in a picture, all of a sudden it says, Brian liked Harb's picture. And now it goes into his feed, and every person that he's connected with has the opportunity or the possibility to see that picture that he liked, all right? So when that person likes it, oh, wrong way. When that person likes it, now all of a sudden, I'm getting second connections that are connected with that other person liking my content, all right? And before we go any further, we'll just go through what that means. First connection, I'm directly connected with that person. Second connection, we're both connected, I don't know person three, but they do, okay? Third connection, I have nobody in common with anybody, all right? So we continue, right? They like it. Now they like it. Now I'm in, all of a sudden, I went from posting one picture and not tagging anybody and going, I hope people like this, to all of a sudden, without even trying, I'm in 12 different lanes of highway. But now those second connections that like that, now that is going to appear in their feed, in their feed, in their feed, in their feed. So now all of a sudden, I'm all over the board. And I've got people liking my content that don't even know who I am. And somehow, I got lucky, and I can make it all the way down here. And I've got third connections liking my posts. And it just continues. All right, so let's just see what that looks like live here. So if we go in, right to my feed, new posts, we're going to recent. Okay, so right here, Dave Scales liked this. Victor posted this. Dave liked it. Since I'm connected with Dave, now it's in my, in my feed. Mike liked this. Andy, Mike's in my, in, in my feed. Same deal. Keep going. We'll find a couple that are multi, multi-layered too. We're live here, so you know, we gotta figure out stuff sometimes. <laughs> All right, one more, we'll go a couple more deep. All right, so like, so not only did he like it, but he commented on it, right? So she posted this, and then Jeff, Jeff commented on it. And if I were to share this, or like this, it would come up the same way. So you see, I'm just getting into all these different things. Now here we go, here's a great example. Jeff must have did a whole bunch in a row. So Jeff commented on this, Okay, then Jeff liked this. Okay, I'm gonna like this too. And then Jeff liked this too. So you see that? And now Jeff liked this. So all of a sudden, I got, look at it, five times, six times, same guy, seven times, because it's all recent, eight times. See how that works? Now he's involved in all this. Now what's crazy is that if you got some, let's see if we got one that's got a couple more on there. So these four all liked it, right? So they're going to get a notification too that he liked it. So now they're all going to see that. So if Allison's like, oh, Jeff liked this. I don't know Jeff. Let me jump over to Jeff. And now Jeff's getting people into his profile. Get her if you got something. I do. I have a couple of questions um, regarding 
posting, what is the best time to post? Yeah, everybody loves that, right? So, um, <laughs> you know, I say this, uh, and, and this is this is really where it is. If, if you're tagging people in your posts, it doesn't really matter, okay? Because people are getting those notifications, and it's going to be constantly when people are doing it. Um, what I've been doing a little bit more now is kind of posting at the end of the day uh, with a bunch of people tagged so that the next morning I get a bunch of content coming out in the morning, right? So maybe I'll post something around seven o'clock and I'll tag like 15, 10, 15 people in a post. Then the next morning, most of those people are like computers down, don't care about the phone. And in the morning, most people will check LinkedIn. And then all of a sudden, Thursday morning, I'll, Friday morning, I'll get a bunch of eyeballs on that post so you know there used to be posting strategies and techniques uh, but it's really about the content that you're putting out and who's involved in the conversation okay that kind of leads to the next question um, somebody has a question about you know if you're posting a photo or an article um, and somebody may not necessarily be a part of that photo or article is it okay to tag them in it so that they see it and read it is that something you should do oh yeah so a couple of things, right? So when I'm posting um, pictures of like a photo of like a bunch of people and um, you know, I'm only posting people that I know that are like, yeah, post tag me in that stuff because you know, I know that you have a lot, you know, that you, you get eyeballs and I want some of those eyeballs shared with me too. You know, the other thing too is, is when you're tagging uh, about uh, like a, like a, um, an actual article, um, I think people are all about it when you're like, Oh, Hey, you know, you guys all should check this out and you tag six people and like great article, you should, you should, you should read it. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So. Yeah. And just a little plug for everybody. When you're posting about your business, if you have news or events that you want to share with chamber members, remember to tag the chamber in it because we pay attention to those notifications. And when we see those items, we like to then share it and make sure our followers see it too. So always remember to tag the chamber on any news that you want to share with other members. Um, another, we have a couple questions about how exactly you do tag somebody. Oh, great. We can go over that. I don't know how to, if you could share how to do that. Let's do that. All right. So I'm just going to pick something. I was, I got a bunch of stuff in the queue, so we'll just do a couple things. All right. So I'm going a little fast. So I'll slow down here. Hold on. All right. So, right. So we're going to start a post. Okay. Write our headlines, hit the camera button, select our image. Um, we can just do this one. It's fine. doesn't matter. Okay. So when I scroll down here, you can, you can tap anywhere on the screen to tag people. I tend to keep my posts clean. Okay. Because what will happen is, is when someone clicks on that picture after it's in there, anybody that's tagged, all the tags will just appear all over that you are. So I tend to just kind of pick a corner or hang out here on the bottom so that people can still read the information that's going on. Right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my mouse, okay? People are gonna come up, and I'm literally just gonna write people's names. All right, so I wanna tag Meredith, boom. Go again, right, just click, You'll, it'll get there. But I wanna do Joe, whoever, great, Joe. And that's it, all right? Then I would hit done, and then I would go. So if you look at this, and here's kind of a combination of kind of both, because you can tag people in your text and you can tag people in the picture as well all right so let's just see what that looks like and that gets a lot traction because you're kind of doing but you don't want to just tag people like i like to to call people out on stuff so if we look at here all right so if you look here here's a post that i do i do a happy hour every other thursday um so this is what i did so join us okay great i use some hashtags you know here's our speakers so I called all the speakers out and if they had a LinkedIn business page, I called their business page out, you know, our sponsors, then the companies that are our sponsors. And then I have kind of a, an alliance with a couple people that I just tag in all my stuff that helps share it. And then I tagged uh, five people in here. So I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 people tagged in this post. I've already got four shares on it and it's got 272 views. And I posted that yesterday. Okay, so the techniques on how you're pulling people in are different uh, if you're if you're utilizing it to call out businesses as well. So, and we have one more question about scheduling posts. Are you is are you able to schedule a post? So, say you want to you have information and you want to share it next week. Can you 
set it up today to be uh, next week. Yeah, you know, the scheduling thing is always weird. There is a way to do it, but I don't know uh, where that is at the moment. I think they changed it. Um, there is ways, so I'm not going to say how to do it and show you if I don't know. But um, you can use other things like Hootsuite that are great too, which will allow you to kind of um, uh, schedule posts on multiple platforms. So if you want to put it out on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and all that, um, you can do that as well. There, there is a way. Um, I don't really use the scheduling post stuff because I kind of have stuff blocked out on my calendar to post things when I need to. Um, there, there is a way. So. Good. All right, let's keep going. All right, moving on. Okay, so the more content that you post, okay, is going to bring more eyeballs to your profile. All right, and the more eyes that come to your profile, open up other opportunities for you to grow your network. All right, so what's great is that when you're posting things, you're going to bring people over and it's going to be first connections, people that you're directly connected to. Maybe these are people that you haven't had opportunities to reach out to in a long time or just people that you've lost contact with, right? You know, it's a great way to kind of reconnect with those people. So the more that you're posting, the more eyes are going to come to your profile. All right. Um, so let's just go over and we'll see what that looks like here. So if you look here, if I go to, um, so we'll show there's two different ways to do this. So the shortcut is right here. People have viewed my profile. All right. So if you look here over the last 90 days, I've had 545 people view my profile and these are all the people that do it. Right. So a second. So there's a first connection, right? Second, second, first, first, right? So there's a lot of first connections and a handful of second connections because I'm putting out so much content, but the first connections are great opportunity to just hit that message button. Hey, what's going on? So like we would just do like this. So here's Brian, right? Boom. Hi, Brian. you know, using you as an <laughs> example. Okay, but if I was gonna really write something, I could say, hey, let's tag up and see what's going on. Boom, set, right? And it's that easy. And they're, they're, they're there and they're ready to go. So utilize the people that are coming to your profile as opportunities to reconnect, network, you know, grow with those people. And then the second connections are the same deal. So the more content you're putting out, Second connections are just as important. We're going to go over second connections in a minute. You know, another technique that I really love is the green dot, the green dot, right? The green dot reach out is awesome. So green dots mean that that person is currently online. So anybody with a solid green dot means that they're on the desktop. Anybody with a, a green dot with a white in the middle means that they're on mobile or on tablet. All right. So what I like to do is run through my home feed. Okay. So we're going to stick with recent. We're going to do a refresh real fast. All right. And if you've got some downtime and you've got opportunities, maybe your pipeline's not there or you're just trying to fill up more ideas, you can run through this. So Scott's online right now. So if I wanted to, I can message Scott and be like, Scott, what's going on? How you doing? How you been? Right? Because I know he's online. I know he's going to see it. Keep scrolling. Mike's online right now, right? So I can just message Mike. Mike, what's going on? Keep scrolling, right? Here, Christian's online. Keep going. So this is a cool little technique I like to use just to catch people when they're actually on the platform at that moment. Fun, fun stuff. And if they don't read it, you're like, hey man, I know that you're online, you read my stuff, what are we not friends anymore? Yeah. All right, keep going. Okay, this is my favorite thing to go over, right? Because everyone always wants to know, should I connect with everybody that wants to connect with me? No, no, you should not. Okay. You know, one of the things that I really strive for is that I know a large percentage of my contacts. Okay. Around 93% is, is who I know. Um, I literally just went through and did a big dump a couple uh, days ago, got rid of like 250 people. You know, my rule is really, if you don't know the face, don't connect. All right. But you know, we always get these opportunities of people that are looking to expand their network. You know, if you're getting things that come into your inbox that are like, Oh, I saw that you are in the Philadelphia area and my company, it, you know, I would rather get a cold email from somebody than a cold LinkedIn 
you know, sales message, okay? You know, if you don't think that I don't know 15 other people that do what you do, and I'm not gonna pick those people first, you know, you happen to come into my inbox and message me cold, like it just doesn't work that way. So I love to vent my stuff. So I usually have three different ways that I roll. Yes, no, and then let's review, okay? So in the review, if they're a second connection, I'm gonna kind of run through their profile, see who they are, see how many people we have in common, and then run through and reach out to my connects that actually are connected with them and just get some feedback on, on those people. You know, if I, if I reach out to somebody and they only have like three connections in common and I look like it could probably be a good opportunity uh, to grow my network, you know, and, and the connections that I know really don't know them well, you know, I'll call them. I'll do some ninja work, find out what, what office they work in, you know, dial by name directory. I know who you are, so I do your directory and I jump in and I'll sit there and be like, hey, what's going on? Uh, any reason why, uh, you know, I, I saw you want to connect, you just want to reach out and why you think it's a good idea. And most people are like, oh man, I know this person, you know them and I want to just touch base. So it's really good to really vet those people. And you know, when you, when you meet those people and you know those people, you know, keep them close and really understand that the content that you're putting out, you want people to see that content that, that and those are the people that you know, right? You know, the, the other thing too is and when you connect with people, uh, especially people that you're either trying to connect with and they accept your connection and the other way around, as soon as that connection gets accepted, you should be right in your inbox, in your, in your message box and saying, hey, thanks for connecting. Let's start, let's set up a time to, to chat and learn more about how we can network together or work together right? Keep it while it's fresh. You know, the big thing is we're trying to get that stuff that's warm. We don't want to go after the ice cold stuff, but we can change the ice cold stuff to warm as well. We're going to go over that in a little bit. So make sure that your connections are, you know, people that you know, and take some time. I know it's a lot, you know, and you have to go through each individual person, but take some time, go through those connections and get rid of them. Uh, they don't get a notification that you deleted them. You know, if you don't know them, it's time to go. But what's nice about going through your actual connections is understanding that maybe there's, again, some people that you haven't met with in a long time and just live message those people right there. Hey, what's up? And I'll show you how that works too. So, you know, you go to your, my network. All right. We go to my network. We go to connections. All right. So if you go here, these little dots right here, this is how you remove people. That's all it is. So you just hit that button, remove connections. They don't get a, uh, they don't get a, uh, a notification. But as you're scrolling through and you're kind of deleting through some people, you know, you're seeing, okay, I got all these people here. And you're like, oh, you know what? I haven't talked to Jeff in a long time. Boom, just message Jeff right there. There you go. And I actually did that the other day. There you go, see? So I went through the other day and I just messaged all these people and I can show you, look. So if you go back into here, into your messages stuff, all these people were people that I just connected with and or uh, reconnected with. Hey, what's up? Let's chat. Let's see what's going on. And out of those 10, 15 people, I got like four other meetings just to reconnect with people and just see what's going on. So don't underutilize, you know, staying connected with people that you know and really pushing, you know, your connections to you know, a, a, a good percentage of those people that are well connected with you. Because the other side of the coin too is when, when people want introductions, you want to be able to make those introductions. And if you don't know those people, what's the purpose of being connected? All right. So the power of the second, we talked a little bit about this before. So again, kind of the same deal. As you're continuing to push out content, right? And you're liking and commenting and sharing other people's stuff. You're going to get a lot of second connections coming to your profile page. This is a great opportunity to expand your network and reach back out to those people. As I showed you earlier on the people that viewed your profile, it's a great way to go through, check out those people, see who they're connected with and see if you can get an introduction to those people. That's not through LinkedIn, through an email. And then it's a little bit more warm instead of it being super ice cold because now they're like, how do I know this person? Oh, that's right. I like their stuff on LinkedIn. And then all of a sudden, boom, you get an introduction to, to you. So you're still fresh on the mind. Okay. So here comes the strategy stuff on how to get more involved with some engagement. Okay. So let's say that there's people out there that you're trying to get involved with, right? 
CEO of this company, marketing director of that company, whoever it is. You know, sometimes when you've got third connection status and nobody can make an introduction for you, you know, or if there's second connections and you only have one random person in common and then you reach out and you say, hey, do you know this person? They say, I have no idea who that person is, right? You know, there's opportunities to get on people's radar, right? And it's not always just doing a, a connect and saying, hello, I would love to connect with you and learn stuff. People don't want that, right? So what you can do is you can follow someone. All right, so a follow is not like hanging out in the bushes and finding out where they live, right? We don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is we wanna follow their online traffic, okay? And with their online traffic, basically what that means is that we're following them and we're getting updates through their feed of everything that they are posting. So as they're posting, even though I'm not directly connected with them, I'm now getting all the content that they are doing and it's coming up in my feed, which allows me to do a couple things, right? We're gonna do one of the four things. We're gonna like it, we're gonna comment it, we're gonna share it, and we're gonna do all the above. Now, all of a sudden, I'm making some noise on someone that has no idea who I am because I'm now liking all their content, all right? So, when we're engaging with those third connections and those, those second connections that really have no one in common, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to their page, okay? We're gonna to go to their activity section and we're gonna check out the activity that they've been doing because we're gonna to try to get some eyeballs. So all of a sudden we're gonna follow that person and then we're gonna jump on a lot of their activity and get involved in the conversation, right? So we hit that see all activity. What that's gonna do, it's gonna bring up all of their posts, either their articles or anything else that they have. And we're gonna jump right on in this conversation and we're gonna we're gonna add a comment and get involved. So let's see what this looks like, right? So this is great when you're hunting and you're trying to find people that you're trying to get in front of. So let's just say that you're trying to get in front of Campbell's, okay, Campbell's soup. All right, so every company page that is an actual company will have everyone put their experience with that company. When that experience comes, it's gonna list all the employees that work there. Okay, so if we look right here in the corner, see all 9,500 people. So we're gonna click yes, I would like to see those people. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and go through 9,600 results of 100 pages, okay? I wanna find specifically certain people that I wanna get in front of, okay? So this is where the filter section comes in. So we're gonna go right here, see all filters? We're gonna click all filters. All right, in all filters, we're gonna have a whole gamut of things that we can filter out, right? We're not gonna really mess with location because we know they're in the greater Philadelphia area, right? They own a bunch of companies, as we can see. So all I really wanna do is mess with Pepperidge Farm, Snyder's, and Campbell's, all right? I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna go market. Because I wanna to talk to somebody more. So I hit apply. Now I've got 188 people. All right, so let's say we got Gary here, right? Director of Brand Marketing at Campbell's. So say I want to get on Gary's radar, okay? And here's some of the stuff I was talking about before. See this background? This is the generic background. Change that. It makes you look more like an active user, all right? So great, he's been here for 14 years. Here's his education. And we're doing stuff live, so Gary's got no activity. So let's try somebody else. So let's say we go to Scott. Go to Scott, same deal, change that background. Here's Scott and Scott, you're killing me. One more. Let's go to Mark. Come on, Mark. All right, go to Mark, education. Right. They're putting me on, I put them, put them on the spot and they're, they're, not, uh, they're not helping me out here. Let's try one more. So CMO at Campbell's, same deal. All right, well, this is actually a good point. So you can see that a lot of people are hiding their activity because they don't want people to kind of go after them. But let's just say, let's go back to the homepage. All right, so Campbell's is just a big company, so that's just the way it works sometimes. But let's just say that we we're gonna check out who liked this, all right? Here's some second connections. Let's say we click on Craig, all right? Because Craig works for a company we're trying to get involved with. All right, so let's see if we can get Craig. About featured stuff. 
experience, activity. Great. So we would go to Craig's activity, hit see all, go to his posts, and now we can get involved in the conversation. Now, he hasn't really posted in a long time, so you can see this says four years, but if this said, you know, a week ago, we would want to like and comment on a lot of this stuff, right? He's sharing article, uh, all his activities, see what's going on, so he liked this the other day, so maybe we like this. So there's a lot of opportunities to find the, the companies that you're trying to get in front of uh, and really get involved in the conversation by activating those activities, liking, commenting, and sharing with those people, and really getting uh, your presence felt. And really, if you think of it this way, right, so all of a sudden, you view that person's profile page, you start to follow them, and then all of a sudden, you get all these likes and comments on their posts. So within a matter of a minute, they got a notification that you follow them, that you viewed your page, and you've got four, uh, you got four of your posts that they comment and like and shared on. Because all we're trying to do is we're trying to take them to get on their radar, and if we do it right, they come to our page. And if they come to our page, we've just gone from super ice cold to a little lukewarm because of checking out who we are. All right, let's continue. All right, so another way to get involved in the conversation is through hashtags, right? So for if you don't know what a hashtag is, hashtags are basically the ability to search for topics within a social media, okay? So Gary Vee has a great strategy called the dollar rating. So the way this works is it's 10 hashtags a day, nine posts under those hashtags, okay? So it's 90 posts a day, times your two cents equals a dollar rate, all right? So this is a great way to get involved, find out other companies that you're trying, that you might not know about, to get involved in the conversation in a new field that might be a great way for you to grow your business. So we're gonna do the same thing. Now hopefully these hashtags will help us out a little bit more than the Campbell's that we do, right? So we're gonna pick something that we know. So if I use, so right here, I just go into the search bar, just like I would look up somebody, and let's say I wanna do hashtag healthcare. Okay, so hashtag healthcare has 9.7 million people following that. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to follow that just like I would somebody else. So when I follow this hashtag, anytime anybody uses the hashtag healthcare in their posts, it now appears in my feed. All right, so we're going to click on that. Now, what that's going to do, it's going to bring us to a page of everybody that has utilized that hashtag. So let's scroll down. So we see we like these guys. Let's click on here. So he works for this company here. Same deal, right? So say he works for this company. He's a vice president. This is a really good company that we're trying to get in front of these guys here. Same deal. We would go to more. We would go to follow. Click on his activity. Go to posts and now run through, okay? Start liking and sharing. But again, be careful of when stuff was being shared and posted, because this was 36 minutes ago, which is great, but if it was 36 weeks ago, stay away from that, all right? So now all of a sudden, we're liking, commenting, and sharing on all this stuff. But now here's the best part. Say we, we don't wanna get in front of this vice, he's the vice president of head of sales, but we're trying to get in front of somebody in HR. Same deal, right? We can go here, we can click on their company, check out a little bit more what they do, go to their employees and filter everybody out, right? We're trying to get involved in the conversation. We're trying to get eyeballs from other areas onto us and what, who we are and what we do, all right? So don't sleep on the, the hashtag game, it really works. And the more that you post, or the more that you get involved in these hashtags, the better. Now, I know what you're saying, there's no way I can do 90 posts a day, that's insane. I don't do 90 posts a day. I do about 50 posts a week. But the more that you do this technique, the more that you will get people coming to your profile, the more people will start to check out who you are, and the more you will get engaged in new industries that you might not be a part of right now. All right, so more of your daily routine, right? Sharing the love. You know, as you're going through and you're starting your morning off and you're scrolling through your feeds, just, again, this is a great opportunity to utilize other people's content as your own. Like, comment, and share. You know, check out 
people's posts that might have a bunch of likes on them and click through the people that liked their stuff and see if that's a good fit for you. You know, really help get in front of some second connections, post some things, really just stay on top of it. And every morning, like, comment, share, and work the hashtag. You know, I, I think the most important thing to really push is that you are the brand, right? And you don't want to be the best kept secret. All right. And this content is out there. So utilize it because it's an opportunity to grow who you are, what you do, and how to get your name in front of other people. And that's all I got for everybody. I know that was a lot. So uh, I'll take any questions, comments, and just remember, you know, you're, you're building yourself to be your own brand. And when you're pushing that out there, you're getting eyes on you. And then when you're ready to really take the brand as a whole, you call us and we can help out. So. so we had a couple questions, Ryan, that came through about the premium um, paid for, I guess, subscription to LinkedIn. Yeah, sure. Do you use it and do you think it's worth it? Sure, yeah. So I do, I do use it. I do think it's worth it. Um, one of the major things that it helps out with is, uh, you know, uh, making your – uh, you appear first in people's searchables. So if they're typing R, I'll be one of the first people to pop up. Uh, it also uh, helps me with the algorithm more in my favor. But the real thing that it really helps out with is the fact that I can see everybody. Okay. So if you don't have premium, uh, what happens is that you're only let up to five people in the section that I can see. All right. So I used to have um, just standard LinkedIn. And really what I would do is I just kind of make it part of my daily routine is every day I would just wake up when I start my routines, I would go through and see if there's any new people that I saw, click on their page. If it's anybody that looks like it would be good because after another person comes on, another person, that per another person leaves. So you're always kind of seeing. So like, say I wanted to TJ, I didn't know TJ and TJ checked out my stuff. You know, I would just write where TJ's at, what he does, uh, then I would literally just copy the LinkedIn address for his page, put it in my Excel file, and then after a couple of days, kind of go back and reevaluate some of those people that have checked out my page. So um, LinkedIn is pricey. I'm not going to lie. It really is. Uh, I think it's like 55, 60 bucks a month or something like that. But, you know, it, it, it just allows you to, I can also in-mail people. So anybody that I'm not connected with, I can message 15 people without actually being directly connected with those people. Um, which I don't do because I'm not a cold guy, but um, it, it does work if you, uh, if you play the cold game, so. Somebody actually had a question about, um, can you follow somebody if you're not connected with them? That's the purpose of following people, is to, yeah. is to stay on people's radar with actually not having to do that. So let's just check it out. So we'll go back here, we'll go home. So if we look here, let me, uh, my internet's load here. Okay, so if we look, let me just see if I can find somewhere. We'll click on a, uh, a post here. All right, here we go. This says 23, perfect. All right, so we'll scroll down. I'm sure there'll be some seconds. All right, here we go, Ed. So if I, if I want to get in touch with Ed, and Ed is a CEO, uh, helping CEOs, right, at Insperity, but I didn't really know anybody there, and I wanted to get on his radar, and I didn't want to just do a blind connect with him. Literally, I would just go more, follow. So now we are not connected, but I'm getting all his content. And he gets a notification that I not only viewed his profile, but now I'm also following him as well. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll work the same game. Once I do that, I'm going to go into his activity. I'm going to start commenting and liking on his stuff because what are we trying to do? We're trying to take people from their page to our page. And once we bring them to our page, we've officially gone from ice cold to lukewarm. Okay. And that was one of the other questions too, is if you follow somebody, do they know it? So they do. They, they, they know it. They get a notification that somebody started following you, but they don't get a notification if you delete them. So don't be afraid to delete people. Okay. Well, with that, we're kind of coming up on three o'clock. So um, I just wanted to let everybody know we do have a copy of the chat window. So if we didn't get to your questions, we will be sharing that with Ryan and he will get in touch with you. Absolutely. Please send me that over. I can reach out. To Definitely. Um, and we will be sending out an email with the survey for today's session. We really would ask that everybody take a few minutes to fill that survey out and give us feedback on today's webinar. Um, it's really important to us to hear from you and help us develop new programming as we move forward. 
Um, I just want to take an opportunity to thank Ryan. Um, we had such a great turnout for today and it's because this topic is so important, especially right now where we're all trying to find ways to connect with each other in a, a digital format. So thank you so much, Ryan, for being with all of us today. I appreciate it. I really appreciate yeah. the opportunity. It was excellent. And like I said, anybody, please reach out and let me know. I'm very accessible and always here to help and uh, help each other grow together. So thank you so much. Hopefully we'll see you in person soon. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> all right. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Stay